Day 40, Road to Sanity, a perspective from an addicted mind. Recovering from the hopeless state of mind and body. Hello, welcome to Dumi's Daily Grind. My name is Dumi and I created this channel to share my life experiences, inspiration I found from others, learnings I have earned and things I have been taught throughout various periods of my life, especially the ones related to sobriety, finding serenity and general mental health topics. Please subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content and please support my channel by becoming a Patreon. The link is below. In this episode, I talk about insanity and finding the solution from the perspective of an addicted mind. Now, sanity is defined as the ability to think and behave in a normal and rational manner and convey reasonable behavior. So I was interested in um, whatever I could find out about insanity and how this word is used in medicine, society, in religion and in spirituality. Also, I wanted to look at it from um, the perspective of fellowships of recovery and it is quite interesting what I found. We think we know what words actually mean until we look at different perceptions and experiences that make these words evolve. I find anything to do with mental health, um, the soul, very interesting. Based on our own individual perceptions, we have to apply different solutions to the problem we face um, as this is how we grow as individuals and evolve as a species. Um, in this episode, I'll be exploring the road to sanity and how we can recover from the hopeless state of mind and body with the help of Alcoholics Anonymous, the book. Um, and this solution is known to help people with other addictions as well such as overeating, gambling, drugs, love and sex addiction, etc. So please be open-minded when I make reference to alcohol and replace it with your addiction. Um, and it really does work for a lot. Now the word insanity originates from the Latin word insanitat, recorded in 1580, which means a derangement of the mind um, insanity is interestingly enough is is not a word used in technical terms as a medical diagnosis as such as different words are used as diagnosis in psychiatry that explain the individual mental conditions that people suffer from which we generalize as insanity what is apparent here is that the definition has a basic foundation rooted in what we um, agree upon as normality, what is normal behavior and what society understands to be a standard way of behaving. So bear that in mind as we continue on the topic. In legal terms, it is recognized as a condition that can free an individual from legal responsibility for the crime, crimes they have committed as it is seen as a lack of capacity to make sound decisions. The legal system can nullify any contractual agreements made if one is found to be legally insane. In psychiatry, it would then be defined as a psychosis, a mania, delirium, neurosis or mental disorder characterized by 
symptoms such as delusions indicating a distorted sense of reality which is measured through using a standard set of interviews and medical tests that determine the chemical imbalances and how they interact with each other to cause that abnormal behavior witnessed in an individual. In religion, it may be described as a possession of sorts by demons that create this abnormal behavior that causes aberrations, um, causes folly and senselessness. It is deemed as a sense of one being out of their minds, such as Paul, who had to defend himself to Festus and said, I am not out of my mind, most excellent Festus, but I am speaking truth and rational words, who in turn responded to him by saying, Paul, you are out of your mind. Your great learning is driving you out of your mind. This happened when Paul told the Jews um, that God can actually raise the dead with Jesus Christ being the first to rise from death. And that promise of resurrection was fulfilled through the Messiah Jesus. And in his defense to King Agrippa, uh, following his arrest for saying he had a face-to-face -face encounter with the risen Jesus. Side note here, religious beliefs and practices were considered at some point in psychiatry um, as a form of mental illness with Freud linking religion with neurosis. At least that viewpoint no longer exists these days. In, spirit, in spirituality, it is perceived that insanity shows itself in individuals who show restlessness, dissatisfaction, and having no ability to let go of attachments. A disturbance of the mind that interferes with interpersonal relationships, lack of serenity, and the acceptance that reality is actually uncertain, and the need to try to know and control the future. It is the disharmony that one may have with themselves, with others, with nature and with God, resulting in irrational behaviors that show themselves um, and are features of mental ill health. Now, let me look at insanity from the addict's uh, perspective. In alcohol and in addiction, recovery, it is viewed as a restlessness, irritability and discontentment where alcoholics insanely believe that they can stop the cycle of chaos in their unmanageable lives on their own free will. Step 2 of the Alcoholics Anonymous program states, came to believe that a power greater than ourselves could restore us to sanity. Insanity here is explained in the book as being blind to the truth of the consequences of drinking as an alcoholic, even though these consequences have been experienced by yourself over and over again. The addict or alcoholic would continuously return to his substance of choice with the full knowledge that it does not solve any of his problems. Instead, it worsens the situation every time, and yet he will go back. In the book Alcoholics Anonymous, under chapter 3, um, more about the alcoholic, more about alcoholism, it is explained that because no one likes to think that they are bodily and mentally different from their fellows, they keep trying to use alcohol normally, in vain though. It is the continuous belief that somehow, someday, he will be able to control 
and enjoy his drinking. This is a great obsession of every abnormal drinker. This pursuit is known to lead the alcoholic into the gates of insanity or death. Getting worse, never getting better. This person deceives and deludes himself and spends his time experimenting on different ways to prove themselves the exception to the rule and continuously want to prove that he is not an alcoholic. He will try to switch his drink. He will try to limit the number of drinks he takes, swearing up and down to stop drinking altogether. Eating a meal before drinking, taking a glass of water after every drink, and so on. An example is made on page 32 of this book of a man who is an alcoholic and discovered that he needs to stop drinking as his drinking had a major impact on his life, um, his business, and he realized that once he started drinking, he could not stop. He was ambitious to succeed and decided to stop drinking altogether. And he actually managed to be dry for a period of 25 years. And after retiring from his successful business, he believed that his long period of sobriety and self-discipline has qualified him as a normal drinker now. And he believed he could drink again and drink like other men. And so he proceeded to drink again. In two months, he was in hospital, humiliated and very confused. He tried to regulate drinking for a while after that and still ending up in hospital. Then he tried to stop completely and he just couldn't. He failed. He threw money at the problem but yet he couldn't stop and his life went to pieces in a couple of years very quickly and he was dead after four years. Another man in the book named Jim um, lost everything because of his drinking. His family, his business, everything. And he found the fellowship of AA and was able to stop through practicing what was given to him. He was then employed by the company that he previously owned and was able to restart his career all over again. He regained his family and stayed sober for a while. He found himself irritated one morning by the fact that he was working in this very same company that he had founded and on his way to a meeting with a prospective client, he stopped for a meal, um, which was complemented by a glass of milk and the obsession of the mind quickly took over him and he thought he could drink by mixing whiskey with his milk um, and he ordered a glass of whiskey and he mixed it with his milk and then he then realized that the effects were not so bad and ordered another one then another one this was the beginning for him to the asylum and losing his family all over again and his position he did this with the full knowledge that he was an alcoholic and um but he quickly forgot the reasons that he had stopped in the first place to say nothing of his mental and physical suffering which drinking had always caused him and foolishly thought that mixing his drink with milk might be a solution for him to start drinking normally again. I don't know. On page 37 it says, um, whatever the precise definition uh, the word may be, um, it is then plainly called insanity. How can such a lack of proportion of the ability to think straight be called anything else? Einstein said, that the definition of insanity 
is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results every time. So how do we find the road to sanity? If insanity is irrationality, absurdity and craziness as described earlier, how do we find a solution to ending our own insanity? How do we achieve soundness of mind and judgment? We know that in extreme cases, self-will is not enough to be a solution to the situation. That wreckage of the past, the insanity of the addicted brain is what I am focusing on right now. Because psychiatry have their own ways of dealing with the problems surrounding mental illness, including medication, therapy and commitment to hospitals and rehabilitation centers, some of which do not work for the addicted brain. <laughs> so, why do alcoholics and addicts keep repeating a cycle that always end up with negative consequences and why is simply stopping not an option for these kinds of people they say that a personality change sufficient to recover from alcoholism is required i have mentioned dr carl Jung's solution in previous episodes um i think specifically the day 15 episode um, but having but haven't touched much on Dr. Silkworth's opinion which can be found in the book under the chapter called The Doctor's Opinion. Dr. Silkworth studied a lot of alcoholics and introduced the element of the body and its allergic reaction to alcohol. He looked at what craving actually means and what takes place physically in the body of an alcoholic that causes them not to be able to stop once they start drinking. This disease is twofold. The first being an obsession of the mind and the second is the allergy of the body itself. The action of alcohol in alcoholics is a manifestation of an allergy that the phenomenon of craving is limited to them and doesn't occur to any other people who drink alcohol. There is a solution, um, the road to sanity. Now, on page 17, it is suggested that the solution lies in fellowship and in a spiritual awakening. Fellowship being a group of people that are tied together by the unmanageability of an alcoholic's life and needing to find sanity and stop drinking. Recovering from their powerlessness over alcohol is what binds them together. The spiritual experience, on the other hand, which can be gained through a personality change and practicing the program of action, which in this case is the 12 steps as suggested in the book. Both are required. Fellowship alone is not sufficient. Please bear in mind that this does not apply to what is called the moderate drinker and the heavy drinker who can stop or moderate their drinking whenever needed. They do not have the hopeless condition of mind and body and are not alcoholic. For the real alcoholic, however, the ones who have lost all control of their drinking, as identified from page 20, the main problem is centered in the mind rather than in the body. If you have tried everything possible to stop drinking, and stop the chaos. Please give this a try. If no human power has been able to help you yet, then having the spiritual experience and 
the spiritual awakening as explained on page 567 in the fourth edition in is what you need a sufficient personality change needs to take place first that willingness to change and acquiring an overwhelming god consciousness followed by a vast change in feeling and outlook be open-minded to all spiritual concepts especially spirituality and find that power that is greater than yourself discard the attitude of intolerance or belligerent denial we only need willingness honesty and open-mindedness these are the essentials of recovery but these are indispensable on page 568 it says that change transform and alter the way we think the psychic change the change through spirituality change from what we had become to what god intended for us to be the best way to change is through firstly acceptance and willing to make the effort which is step one and accept spiritual help which is step two and find out what god has intended for you to be Jung was open enough to understand that some people can benefit from spiritual principles and not psychiatry only those people are us and dr Jung literally um realized that they could help an alcoholic through suggested spirituality a virtual spiritual experience people practicing christianity from the oxford group and these steps 3 to 12 are based on those principles that's why i'm on this journey to finding that spiritual experience to change sufficient enough to stop the insanity my favorite um paragraph here is called a vision for you uh, and i'd like to end this episode reading from page 164 of the big, big book right at the end of the program of action and right at the end of the chapter called a vision for you and it states the following our book is meant to be suggestion only we realize we know only a little God will constantly disclose more to you and to us. Ask him in your morning meditation what you can do each day for the man who is still sick. The answers will come if your own house is in order. But obviously, you cannot transmit something you haven't gotten yet. See to it that your relationship with him is right and great events will come to pass for you and countless others this is the great fact for us abandon yourself to god as you understand god admit your faults to him and to your fellows clear away the wreckage of the past give freely of what you find and join us we shall be with you in the fellowship of the spirit and you will surely meet some of us as you trudge the road to happy destiny may god bless you and keep you until then Dumi's daily grind is a presentation purely based on my experiences inspiration i found from others learnings i have earned and things i have been taught throughout various periods of my life this show is not representative of any group organization religious or spiritual beliefs or any sobriety programs my goal is to open up a conversation about some things that may be difficult for us to talk about and to purely encourage us to be open-minded to the tools that may be or are freely available. Here, 
I talk about recovery, spiritual growth, mental health issues, sobriety, relapses, and spiritual well-being, focusing mainly on the daily work, the grind, that goes into finding peace of mind, contentment, freedom from addiction, life's hardship, daily spiritual and mental struggles. I hope that together we can find solutions, inspiration and motivation on living healthy, being present, being sober and clean while we travel together on this journey toward finding enlightenment or at least some peace of mind. Thank you so much for your time, your support, and being with me on this journey toward finding serenity. If you enjoy listening or watching me, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and let your friends, your family, and your tribe know that they can also join me on this journey. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can send an email to dummiesdailygrind at gmail.com. Until I see you next time, stay well and may your higher power shower you with blessings and keep you safe today. Let us be diligent with the work required to achieve our goals and hopefully experience serenity and peace of mind the answers are always right in front of us and will be revealed if we truly seek them let us be present conscious and intentional in our lives and go positively to achieve the happiness that we truly seek goodbye for now and god bless you